I'm talking to Antoine. Uh, how are you up today, Antoine? Great, Sylvia. Great to speak with you. And you. It's been a while, hasn't it? So you've got your new album coming out on the 1st of September, Sphere. And yes. that's all ready to roll. What made you put another one out there? Because the last three, were you got huge success with the last one, especially Ad Perpetuum. It was a great album, but it was already two years ago. Time flies, and um, yeah. uh, why another one? I keep working on music, and uh, I don't really take breaks from it. I just keep creating. Um, and it's a self-imposed deadline, really, because no one is chasing me up to do those things. It's just something within me that I need to do. I started to work on that one before the last one came out. So Ad Perpetuum came out in 2014, it's September, if I remember correctly. And I started to work on that new one in August. And um, it was a slow process still, because uh, two years is, is quite a long time. Yeah, and you've got two guest musicians on this one. And is it Jerry De Villiers? I mean, he's received widespread critical acclaim as a fusion guitarist. Got his very unique style. Also, Gary Husband. I consider um, them collaborators on the same level, really, because uh, on this album, they really were involved deeply in the process. Jerry, in fact, collaborated on the writing on uh, three tracks. And uh, Gary was very, very much involved from the time we were in the studio to the mixing process. Uh, he's provided a lot of feedback. So I would say it was very much a collaborative effort. Although it's my project and uh, I have the, uh, the last say on, on, on everything, at the end I really wanted to get their feedback I won't take the credit for the whole project. So, uh, yeah, Gary and Jerry are two fantastic collaborators. It was an honour to have them on board. So how do you approach the writing and composing process? Because some of the tracks on there, they're very powerful, aren't they? It's an interesting process because I'm more feeling the music than thinking about it. So I will sit down with an instrument and I'm not writing or composing for the sake of composing. I'm really composing when I feel I have a very good idea. But to get those ideas happening, you have to be working at it on a steady basis. I mean, each person has it, his or her own methods, but uh, for me, it's, I think you need to really work on a steady basis on it. So I really have to noodle with the instrument or have um, ideas going on and try to think about concepts but it's, it's done, it's a mixture of an organic process and also a kind of a disciplined process. It's a mixture of having a spark, a, an idea, and mm -hmm. then have the discipline of pushing this idea to the max you can. Am I getting it right then? You sit there, you, you sit there with an instrument, and then, as you say, you're noodling with this instrument, or there might be just a sound you hear, and you just take it, twist it, turn it around and make it your own. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. And when you find this idea that you think it's great, yeah. that, that idea is not, it's just a basic idea and is not a, a finished product, obviously. So what you need to do is really develop a, a self-discipline in having this idea developed into something that's even greater than the initial sparks. I guess that's the best way to describe it. On your last album, uh, Ad Perpetuum, you had a video of the making. So is there going to be another one for this one, for, for Sevilla? Oh, yes. And uh, actually, I could say there is one. Uh, yeah. If anyone's interested in uh, watching the making of this album, there's a nice little mini documentary that lasts just under 15 minutes. Uh, it's now available on YouTube. If you check out my channel or my website, you'll find it straight away. My website is Antoine Fafard with a D dot com, or if you type in in Google Sphere documentary, you might find it straight away. Um, it explains a little bit the background of this project. You see footage of Gary in studio and myself in my home studio, and um, we try to give a little bit of background on, on the music, on the um, in what context we recorded it, and hopefully um, it's a nice insight because. Sometimes um, if you just listen to a piece of music, it's not enough. You'd like to know, uh, you know how it was recorded, where it was recorded, in what context, who are the players. So uh, that's why now uh, when I release an album, I always produce a little mini documentary and also provide some 
additional videos to add a little bit more to the music. It makes it more uh, interesting, I think. Oh, definitely, definitely. One thing that um, I always find curious is because it's instrumental and there's no words, how you come up with the title for each track. What does that track mean to you? Like Cherishing and Still Invictus. How do you come about yeah. those titles? So I can go through a few titles if you want. For, for instance, yeah. the first track of the album is called Reminiscence. And uh, it's simply because the uh, the groove was inspired by a groove by a drummer called Tony Williams, uh, who uh, I admire a lot. And the groove was uh, reminiscing of him. So this is one an example. Uh, you mentioned Still Invictus. The Invictus... Uh, means that you haven't uh, been beaten yet so i i <laughs> i um make a parallel on the, the fact that when you create this sort of music of course it's not highly commercial and still i'm uh, very much involved into it i still do it and uh, so that means i haven't been beaten yet <laughs> by, <laughs> by uh from doing it there's always a kind of a symbolism or a reason behind it. Uh, I always, I'm always a fan of uh, Latin words or Latin expressions. There's another song called Facta Non Verba, so that means um, facts instead of words. So um, I think facts are uh, stronger than saying that you will do things that you end up never doing. I mean, sometimes there's a deeper uh, meaning, sometimes it's a little bit more superficial. Well, I think it's it's nice to find a title that, mean something oh absolutely absolutely and you mentioned earlier Antoine if anyone wanted to get hold of any details about your um, latest album or your previous catalogues or even uh, what you're working on where can they find all these details it's all on my website so I need I feel I need to spell it out so uh, Antoine A-N-T-O-I-N-E Fafard is spelled F-A-F-A-R-D Dot com. Everything is on this website. You'll find videos, all the details on the four albums I've released so far and on my future projects. Facebook, I'm there as well, Twitter. And um, I try to post things that um, people might find interesting, um, videos and um, audio excerpts. So uh, check it out, as they say. What artist would you say mostly inspires you? Oh, there are many. Uh, I always mention Frank Zappa. Because um, uh, we're talking about someone with no boundaries, someone who's done everything any type of orchestration can think of. And as a matter of fact, there's a project I'm working on which uh, Zappa really influenced me in the fact that I've uh, hired a symphonic orchestra in the Czech Republic. I did a session, it was a very special session I did earlier this year. And this is uh, some music I will release hopefully next year, uh, 2017 or or later, depending on uh, circumstances, so we'll see. But um, Zappa is, is a big influence, but there are so many. I admire so many musicians for various reasons. The first, mm -hmm. uh, about the, the playing, the musicality, of course, but also because of their approach to music. I mean, Miles Davis was someone who um, didn't stick to one style of music. Or you, you hear musicians that have evolved over the years. Uh, Jeff Beck is one. There are so many. I admire any musician that pushes the limit and try to explore new things and take chances. And I think that's that's um, I'm trying to do from my end. Yeah, well, they push the boundaries and they're more experimental and uh, not afraid to do something different. Yeah, and it, it can be going from one very uh, eclectic style to something maybe com more commercial. I don't um, have a problem with that. I've done only instrumental music. It doesn't mean I won't uh, do um, projects with vocals as well in the future. This might be a new challenge for me. Oh, that should be very... Um, can't wait yeah. for that. A new avenue. Yeah, for, for definitely. Me anyway. <laughs> definitely. Oh, thank you for talking to me. It's been an absolute delight again. And uh, I wish you well with this. And it's out on the 1st September. And it's available at the moment on your website. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, please check it out. It will be also available on uh, download iTunes, Amazon, and uh, all the others from the 1st of September. Oh, perfect. Oh, thank you.